Russian forces appear closer to taking control of Severodonetsk, a key city in Ukraine's eastern Donbas region. The regional governor there says the last route out of the city has been destroyed, making it impossible to organize humanitarian aid or organize evacuations of the civilian population. Hundreds of Ukrainian fighters and civilians are sheltering in a chemical plant there, as Russian missiles still pound the city that's become the latest epicenter of the war. Firing back, Ukrainian defense forces say this aerial footage shows the destruction of three Russian Grad rocket launchers, which they believe were used to shell the embattled city of Severodonetsk and surrounding areas. Street battles are raging in the eastern city. The governor of the region says it is mostly under Russian control. Much of Severodonetsk has been destroyed. Authorities believe some 500 civilians, including children, are sheltering at the vast Atsot chemical plant. Ukraine has accused Russia of shelling the works and sparking a fire. Russian-backed separatists say they're holding back from the plant to avoid an environmental catastrophe. Images that remind Ukrainians of the siege in Mariupol's steelworks just weeks ago. In Kyiv, the defence ministry described the difficulty of the current situation in the east. The second phase of the full-scale invasion of Russia continues. The enemy continues to outnumber us in equipment and artillery. The Ukrainian defence forces are actively fighting and inflicting high losses on the enemy. The Russian Ministry of Defence released footage claiming to show their troops opening fire on Ukrainian militants. Their spokesperson said they had hit important targets. In the Donetsk People's Republic, high-precision air-launched missiles destroyed a large number of weapons and military equipment delivered to the Ukrainian nationalists, including weapons from the US and European countries. Back in Sverodonetsk, an end to the constant shelling and exchange of fire rages on, with no end in sight and all bridges out of the city cut. Let's get the latest now from DW correspondent Roman Goncharenko, who's in the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv. Roman, very good to see you. Let's start with that situation we just heard about in Sverodonetsk and the Azot chemical plant in that city. What is the latest you can tell us about the situation for Ukrainian troops and civilians that may be there? Well, there is not much information, new information that we are getting. Um, the main news of the day is probably that the third bridge has been blown, so there are no bridges now connecting to that city of Severodonetsk, which makes the situation of Ukrainian forces and civilians even worse. So we know that hundreds of civilians are hiding in that chemical plant Azot, which is the Ukrainian word for nitrogen. And it's, it's dangerous to be there in normal times. It's a big, it's a huge chemical plant. I've seen it. Um, and of course, it was not working in, um, in, in recently, but still there are shortages of chemicals there. It's very dangerous. Uh, environmental catastrophe, catastrophe is possible. And we do not know how much food and how much water those civilians hiding there still have. Uh, another information, piece of information that we have, and which is wor worrying, is that uh, the bunkers at that chemical plant are not uh, that that good uh, as in Mariupol in Azovstal, which was um, um, which was fighting off um, Russian army for for weeks or months even. So we don't know how much they can last, um, and that's why Ukrainian side is negotiating with the Russian army about the possibility of those civilians to get out. And I think it's a matter of days and, uh, when they will have to leave that plant. Now, let's move to elsewhere in the country. Russian forces are claiming that they've hit Ukrainian arms depots. Do you know anything more about what impact that's having on the Ukrainians' army ability to fight? Well, we can only guess. Um, such attacks are always um, the the um, aftermath of such, such attacks um, are strictly confidential. So, Ukrainian army is not disclosing any information. Um, what we 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 know, we know that uh, Russia is trying to hit such targets, and um, sometimes Ukraine says there was no military um, at that point. Sometimes there is just no information, like in this case. So we can assume that maybe some. Some Western weapons were hit, we don't know. 
But um, what we do, do know that um, even if some uh, Western weapons in Ukraine are destroyed, they are desperately needed um, on the front. So um, Ukraine is um, desperately asking to send more weapons because, as we see in the east, in, in this fighting in the city of Severodonetsk and the neighboring city Lysychansk, every single cannon matters. Let's pick up on that thread because the president of Ukraine, Zelensky, he is asking for more and faster weapon deliveries from NATO countries. It's uh, unclear just how many of those weapons are coming. Can Ukrainians continue fighting without that? And, and how do they feel about the support they're getting from the West? Well, there, is no, there are no polls to that, so we can only rely on the information we get from the uh, governmental sources or talking to people here in Kiev and the capital. And the, the, the mood is rather divided, I would say. Basically, uh, most people say, yes, we are very grateful for the West, uh, for the support, for the military support. And, but, but then when you talk about special countries, um, the mood is different. So when we talk about countries like the United States or the United Kingdom, which supported Ukraine with weapons before uh, the, the war broke out in, in late February, uh, so most people are very grateful. And I think mm -hmm. that was a, a, um, a very special situation for Ukraine. But when we talk about countries like Germany, which hesitated a lot, we hear a lot of criticism. Yep. And I wonder when Ken Chancellor Scholz is going to visit Kiev, this mood will change. Roman well, Goncharenko with the latest there in Kiev. Thank you very much. Now, wherever possible, people keep fleeing from active battle zones from the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Now, one of those areas is the front line of Bakhmut, which is just south of Severodonetsk that we've just spoken about. That city, too, has been hit by shelling, and much of its infrastructure has been destroyed. But for now, it's still possible for people to get out. And for more on exactly that effort, we are joined by Salam Aldin. He's the founder of Team Humanity, the, an international nonprofit based in Denmark. His organization helps people get to safety, and he is joining us now from Ukraine. Salam, welcome to the show, and thank you for joining us. Um, you have transported people from this area, Bakhmut, uh, which is quite far to the east, where there's been heavy fighting. Can you tell us more about the situation there? Yeah, it's very hard. The situation is really hard right now um, because the civilians can't get out. And the only way to get them out is having armored trucks going in and quickly getting them out from the basements, from wherever they are. Um, and the mostly people actually not from Bamut is actually from Severodonetsk and the villages around it. Um, so it's really hard to get them out while they would love, let's say, the military when they bring it to us. Uh, then we need to get them into the buses and drive them immediately away because they're bombing also Bahamut. Uh, yesterday we were sitting uh, and waiting for um, for the evacuation and then 200 meters away from us, you could hear the bomb like hit somewhere. So it's, the situation is really tense right now, really tense. And going off of that, there have been so many efforts to get civilians out of various places throughout the course of this war. Many of these convoys have failed. Many of these humanitarian corridors have failed. How are you able to get in and out of these dangerous areas? You know, we were uh, driving inside. And we were driving from Bahmut to go to Severodonetsk. And then we got stopped by a checkpoint not so far away, like maybe seven kilometers away from Severodonetsk, eight kilometers. They said, if you go this way, you will not come back. Uh, it seems like Russians are hiding themselves in the bushes, in the houses, and then when the car pass, they just shoot after them. This is how it seems like. This is the soldiers, what they told us. And then we are standing next to this checkpoint, and when you see, like, like, like yesterday, where there was a military ambulance that just passed us, and you should, like, it was, I was almost throwing out because it was the smell of dead people in that ambulance. You could smell it. The window was open and it just passed us and you could smell the dead people. in it. So it's really like crazy right now. And the most, um, the most hard thing is to get the civilians out. And we're trying to do our best. But to do that, we need armored trucks. And we have like two buses, small buses that can get in quick and out again. So... Um, it's really, really hard to get civilians. And there is a lot of children, a lot of women. Uh, we took, we had them in the bus, we drove them away. They were all traumatized. You could see the children are traumatized. You could see everybody's traumatized and also injured. 
So it's really, really hard right now. Uh, you seem really to be on your own there. Can you tell us more about what's behind your operation? Who's, who's able to fund you to be able to do the work that you're doing? The people who is funding us is the people who trust us and believe in our work. Uh, we've been doing a different evacuation. We were also in Afghanistan last year evacuating. So it's actually um, organizations, uh, nonprofit organizations, and mostly civilian people, good people around there that is from all over the world that sending donations so we could do the evacuation. Right now, we were asking for getting an armored truck so we could get inside where we know we're going to be shot at. We know we're going to be bombed at. But an armored truck can get in quick, get the people out, get them uh, to the safety, and then drive them out from that place. Because Bahamut is not is not uh, safe. Kramatorsk is not safe. Sarajevo is not safe. None of these places is safe. We, could, we were sitting, and then the bomb like hit 200 meters away from us. And the people was, was standing around. It was just normal. You could see their eyes. It was just they're traumatized. Mm -hmm. They've been hearing this bombings like for a very long time. So it's like just a normal thing for them. Salam al Din from Team Humanity International there in Ukraine. Thank you very much for taking this time out in a very difficult situation.